Hey boys and girls, let's do the June 2012 New York State Regents Physics exam. We're on page two, question one. One and two refer to this picture. In a drill during basketball practice, a player runs the length of a 30 meter court. 30 meters. He runs the length and back. So he goes 30 and then back. That's a total of 60 meters. The player does it three times, times three, so that's 180 meters. And he does it in six seconds, 60 seconds. Six seconds, boy, he was ripping, 60 seconds. So let's go see what they wanna know about this guy. The magnitude of the player's total displacement. Displacement is a vocabulary word. You start here, displacement refers to the vector from one point to another point, from this place to that place, displacement. Uh, and if he starts here and back three times, his total displacement's gotta be zero. Kind of a tricky vocabulary question, displacement. The average speed, the average speed. Now it would be velocity, but velocity is in a straight line. Speed is just total distance divided by total time. So total distance is going to be 180 meters divided by 60 seconds. So it's 18 divided by 6. That's correct. 3 meters per second. Question 3. A baseball is thrown at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. The horizontal component of the ball's initial velocity is 12 meters per second. What's the actual velocity? So we're looking for the hypotenuse, where the angle is 40 degrees. And on your formula sheet, you've got this triangle. So they're giving you the adjacent side, the angle, and the hypotenuse. So we want one of the equations that involves a C, B, and theta. And that's cosine of theta is equal to B over C. So let's try that. Cosine of theta is equal to b over c, and they're looking for c. So multiply both sides by c. Uh, we want c by itself, so divide by cosine theta. So c is equal to b divided by cosine theta. Here's where you want to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And at this point, you could actually look at a few numbers. You could say uh, c is equal to 12 meters per second divided by the cosine of 40. Now this cosine of 40 has got to be less than 1, so that number's got to be greater than 12. So you can get rid of a couple of answers that can't be. And it's either 15 or 18. And uh, I'm going with 15, 15.7. Question 4. A particle could have a charge of. It asks you uh, if you know that one elementary charge is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And so it's asking if you know that any charged particle has got to be an even whole multiple of this number. So it can be 1.6, it can be uh, twice that, which should be 3.2, three times that, which should be uh, uh, 4.8. So let's check. 1.6, these are both less than 1.6, so it couldn't have a smaller charge, not for a, a, a particle like that. Uh, there's 3.2, so that's the correct answer. 4.1 isn't quite uh, up to the 4.8 you need to get it to if you had uh, three of those particles. Question five, which object has the greatest inertia? Again, this is a vocabulary question. Inertia is mass. Mass is inertia. So the question is, which of these has the greatest mass? Question six. A car initially traveling east with a speed of five meters per second is accelerated uniformly at two meters per second squared east. So it's got an initial velocity of five meters per second, acceleration of two meters per second squared, a time of 10 seconds, uh, during this 10 second interval, the car travels a total distance of? Distance is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. 
So we could write the equation, distance equals VIT plus one half AT squared. All right, so let's see, the car is going five meters per second for 10 seconds for an initial uh, distance of 50 meters, even without the acceleration, and we add to it one half of AT squared. Well, A is two, half of A is, uh, half of two is one. So it's gonna be uh, T squared, which is 100. Throw meters in there, so we're gonna go about 150 meters. Question seven, which situation describes an object that has no unbalanced force acting on it? No unbalanced force. So that's kind of like it has a balanced force. There's nothing pushing it, no unbalanced force. Well, force equals mass times acceleration. No force means no acceleration. So we're looking for an object that is not undergoing acceleration. An object in free fall tends to be accelerating. And a satellite orbiting the Earth, uh, that uh, satellite could be an apple in free fall. A hockey puck moving at a constant velocity. Constant velocity means zero acceleration. So I'm going to guess this is the right answer. A laboratory cart moving down a frictionless 30 degree incline. I don't know if you've ever been below one of these things, but uh, they pick up speed. They accelerate. Net force. Correct answer is three. Question eight. A child riding a bicycle at 15 meters per second, velocity initial is 15 meters per second, and accelerates at negative three meters per second. So this thing is slowing down. Minus three meters per second for four seconds. What's the child's speed at the end of this four second interval? Velocity final, velocity initial plus AT. That works. So velocity initial plus AT. So 15 meters per second plus uh, negative three times four would be uh, negative 12 meters per second. So in four seconds, accelerating at a negative three meters per second, uh, per second, you would uh, you change your velocity 12 meters per second. And that would leave you 50 minus 12 at three meters per second. Question nine, an unbalanced force of 40 newtons keeps a five kilogram object traveling in a radius of two meters. So an object going in a circle, obviously being held by some string. What's the speed of the object? So the velocity. For a centripetal is equal to ma, centripetal, and a centripetal is v squared over r. So I'm gonna write the equation for centripetal equals mv squared over r. I'm looking for v. So I do algebra, multiply by r, divide by m, and take the square root of it. So the velocity is equal to the square root of rf over m. Calculator time. And let's see, what do we have? We've got uh, 2 times 40, so that's 80 divided by 5. 80 divided by 5 is 16, and the square root of 16 should be about 4 meters per second. Question 10. A 5 kilogram block slides across a horizontal frictionless surface at 10 meters per second for 4 seconds. The magnitude of the block's momentum. All right, what's the formula for momentum? I forget what momentum is. Uh, let's see, uh, it's a little p. Big P is power, little p is momentum. i find an equation over here, it's got a little p, here we go. P is equal to mass times velocity. P is equal to mass times velocity. Um, we don't care about the four seconds. Five kilograms is the mass, 10 meters per second is the velocity, 50 kilogram meter per second should be the momentum, five times 10, 50. Question 11. A 0.5 kilogram puck sliding down a horizontal shuffleboard court is slowed to rest by a frictional force of 1.2 newtons. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the surface of the shuttleboard? Shuffleboard, shuffleboard, whatever that is. Oh, that's one of those games where they, uh, they set up the long thing and then uh, the little thing around it, you put powder on the table and and then you try to hit the little targets, right? Isn't that what they're talking about? Sure, why not? 
highlight coefficient of friction. Force of friction is mu force normal. As it turns out, you have to remember what the normal force is. Now, normal means perpendicular. You've got an object sitting on a table. The force downwards is balanced by an upward force or a normal force. So it's perpendicular to the surface you're sitting on. And the force normal is equal to the weight, mg, times the angle of the ramp that you're sitting on, cosine theta. And if you're on a uh, shuffleboard court, it better be perfectly flat. So cosine of 0 is uh, 1 multiplied by 1. It's equal to mg. So I can say that my force of friction equal to mu mg. And divide both sides by mg. My coefficient of friction is equal to force of friction divided by the weight, mg. So 1.2 newtons divided by... 0.5 kilograms times 9.8. I'm going to guess that the correct answer is this.